This is CCTN, the Catholic Community Television Network. CCTN and its programming are made possible by your generous support. 5125 South Apopka Vineland Road, Orlando, Florida, 32819. Thank you. CCTN, the Catholic Community Television Network, and the Holy Family Catholic Church in Orlando present the Roman Catholic Sunday Mass. Good morning and welcome to Holy Family Catholic Church. This weekend we celebrate the baptism of the Lord. Our entrance hymn is River of Glory. Please stand. Good morning, everybody. Today, this morning, we have Father William Brock visiting and celebrating with us. Welcome, Father. Let's begin this celebration in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Dear friends in Christ Jesus, today we celebrate the baptism of our Lord. It was an expression of the triune God in the person of Jesus, the th uh, second person in the Trinity. When we celebrate the baptism of the Lord, we are also reminded of our own baptism, the grace that we have received for our salvation, the grace that we have received to live our faith. So let's call to our mind at the times that we fail to understand this call, the grace that we have in our daily lives so that we can prepare our hearts to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you raised the dead to life in the spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring light to those in darkness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us of our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Father, glory to God in the highest. 
Let us pray. Almighty ever living God, who when Christ had been baptized in the river Jordan, and as the Holy Spirit descended upon him, solemnly declared him your beloved son, grant that your children by adoption, reborn of water and the Holy Spirit, may always be well pleasing to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, All you who are thirsty, come to the water. You who have no money, come. Receive grain and eat. Come, without pain and without cost. Drink wine and milk. Why spend your money for what is not bread, your wages for what fails to satisfy? Heed me, and you shall eat well. You shall delight in rich fare. Come to me heedfully. Listen, that you may have life. I will renew with you the everlasting covenant, the benefits assured to David. As I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander of nations, so shall you summon a nation you knew not. And nations that knew you not shall run to you because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, who has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call him while he is near. Let the scoundrel forsake his way and the wicked man his thoughts. Let him turn to the Lord for mercy, to our God who is generous and forgiving. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so high are my ways above your ways and my thoughts above your thoughts. For just as from the heavens the rain and snow come down and do not return there till they have watered the earth, making it fertile and fruitful, giving seed to the one who sows and bread to the one who eats, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. My word shall not return to me void, but shall do my will, achieving the end for which I sent it. The word of the Lord.
above the flood, the Lord sits as king forever. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is begotten by God, and everyone who loves the Father loves also the one begotten by him. In this way, we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome, and the victory that conquers the world is our faith. Who indeed is the victor over the world, but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came through water and blood, Jesus Christ, not by water alone, but by water and blood. The Spirit is the one who testifies, and the Spirit is truth. So there are three that testify, the Spirit, the water, and the blood, and the three are of one accord. If we accept human testimony, the testimony of God is surely greater. Now the testimony is this, that he has testified on behalf of his son. The word of the Lord. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. This is what John the Baptist proclaimed. One mightier than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop and loosen the thongs of his sandals. I have baptized you with water. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. It happened in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth to Galilee and was baptized in the Jordan by John. On coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens being torn open and the spirit like a dove descending upon him. And a voice came down from the heavens. You are my beloved son. With you, I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. Good morning. Deccan Herald, uh, one of the leading newspapers in India, 
asked a question to all the Christians in the world, and they announced the prize for the best answer. The question was, why are you a Christian? And there are tens and millions of uh, answers came in, but one was chosen as the best answer, and it was given the prize. It was given by Mother Therese of Calcutta. The question was, why are you a Christian? The answer Mother Teresa gave was, there is life of Christ in me, that's the reason why I am a Christian. This is the whole essence of today's celebration of the baptism of the Lord. We have been given the life of Christ. That's the reason why we receive uh, the baptism. There was no need for Jesus to be baptized because he was sinless, he was the son of God. But he wanted to express his solidarity with us and he wanted, wanted to completely identify himself with the humanity. That's the reason why he came to, came to John the Baptist in River Jordan to be baptized. And we understand when in the, in the version of uh, uh, the Gospel of Matthew, when Jesus comes, John the Baptist is astounded. And he's asking, it is you who should baptize me, not I who should baptize you. And Jesus says, it is the eternal plan of God. This is the plan of God the Father, therefore, please do it. And he's giving permission uh, to John the Baptist that he should baptize him and the baptism. Imagine the scene of baptism. When so many people were listening to John the Baptist and uh, they were ready to come for the baptism in the River Jordan, they were in line. We, ha we have to remember, till then, baptism was not a Christian baptism. It was a baptism of ritual for the turning of the sin in the ancient religions. That was, which, that was what John the Baptist was give, giving. And now, Jesus was one among in the line to be baptized. When Jesus comes to uh, John the Baptist, when his, his turn came, and when he comes to John the Baptist, and uh, uh, that was a revelation for John the Baptist. And now he comes and he is baptized, and the heavens turn open, and the, the Holy Spirit coming in the form of dove descending upon Jesus, and the voice was heard. So that's, that's what I told in the beginning. This was an expression of the triune God. They, they were expressing themselves in the, in the second person of Jesus that he is anointed. He, is the, he, he has the communion with uh, the other two persons in the triune God. And this was an affirmation. This was a confirmation that God the Father sent him to proclaim the good news to the poor. And this was a confirmation by the Holy Spirit that he is empowered. And that's the, that's the point where till then Jesus had a hidden life of 30 years. Now he, he, is, he has become a public figure. He has become a preacher. He has become a teacher. He has become a, a healer. He, is, he has become a proclaimer. And he has become a, reform, a reformist. And this is how the ministry of Jesus is begun in, in the baptism. And till now, the focus was on John the Baptist. Now the focus is on Jesus. Because John the Baptist became the last prophet in the, in the era of the, uh, the, the, uh, the Old Testament. Now the baton has been handed to uh, Jesus. Now he's beginning his, uh, his ministry. And when we celebrate this, uh, the, the baptism of the Lord, the celebration of the baptism of the Lord on this table, the Eucharistic table, we are reminded of our own baptism. Whenever we come to the church for our worship, and we are reminded of our baptism. And how should I understand the, the baptism that I have received? How, how can I relate myself, the baptism when I was a child, when I received the sacrament of baptism? First of all, let's reflect on how it enhances my life. First of all, it increases the quality of my life. As I understand, you know, 
we are not created as only physical uh, human beings. We are also spiritual human beings. That's the reason why we receive, that, that's how that we understand when I received the baptism, the sacrament of baptism, I became a spiritual human being also. Otherwise, we will understand what's the quality of my life. My, my quality of life is the, the technology, the science, the advancement of technology, everything that I relate myself. If we understand myself as a physical human being, of course, the technology and the science can enhance the quality of life in a physical way. And what is going to enhance the quality of my spiritual life is the sacrament that I received. Because baptism is the initial uh, sacrament through which I receive all other sacraments. So it enhances my spiritual, spiritual uh, being. The reason why I receive, because inside me there is a soul which came from God the Father. A supreme soul has given me the, the, the soul that I have. That's the reason why we crave for God. We seek for God. We understand there is a God within me because I have a soul. And the, the baptism, the sacrament of baptism is enhancing and increasing the quality of my soul. That's the reason why we have so many saints, especially when we think about Maximilian Kolbe. Why he, he was ready to sacrifice his life for someone. When we think about Mother Teresa of Calcutta, why she was serving the poor, forgetting her own health, because she understood that her soul is thirsting for God, and she could understand and see and experience God, God in other people, in the poor, the needy. So that's the quality of my spiritual life. So when I understand that I am not only a physical human being, I'm also a uh, spiritual human being. I should understand what the material world I have. And otherwise, we think all life is concentrating on this material uh, world around me. No, that's not the way that a Christian, a baptized a disciple of Christ should understand the life. We should understand that we are created for God and there is a purpose for our life. Now, we are, we are very happy that during this pandemic we are here to praise and worship God in the church because that's God has protected us. And now we are happy that we are going to receive and some of us have received the vaccine. I'm telling you an example. This vaccine is going to protect your physical life and what is going to protect your, your spiritual life? The spiritual life is going to be protected by the body and blood of Christ. The, the, the graces that we have, we receive in and through the sacraments. It is there I understand God is merciful and he is so compassionate. That's the reason why I'm here today. So let's think about the first point, my, the, the baptism that I received increases the quality of my life. If I approach that, that, uh, that point in my life, then I should have a deep faith in the celebration that we have in the Eucharistic table. When I receive the body and blood of Christ, I should understand that the compassion, the mercy of God has come to me through the body and blood of Christ into my life to enhance the quality of my spiritual life so that I can understand my surroundings. My material being around me is only temporary. Second point we should always understand, my baptism is inviting me to take part in the mission of Christ. Because we have experienced God. As the people around uh, Jordan, when Jesus uh, was baptized, they, should, they, they could understand the experience of God, the triune God, by hearing the voice from heaven. The same way we listen to the voice from heaven when we receive the, the sacrament of baptism and we are invited to share this experience with other people. There are millions and millions of people who never experienced the love of Christ. So the baptism is inviting us to share this experience. We are called to be the missionaries. The third thing we have to remember is baptism, and in, baptism is an invitation to live our faith. 
Because through the faith we understand the grace of God. Through the faith we understand my being as a spiritual being also. Therefore, let's ask the Holy Spirit. Let's be open to the Holy Spirit, which was given, uh, given to us through the baptism. And he's around us. He's within us. We need to take time to listen to him and, and act upon what he says within us. If we have this understanding in our daily life, we'll be able to enjoy the happiness and joy of being in Christ. So let's ask that grace every day, whenever we come to worship, whenever we pray, whenever we receive the body and blood of Christ, let us ask that grace, Lord, help me to understand my spiritual being, that I am united with you. Let me experience the joy and happiness in being with you, that the Lord may help us. Amen. Please stand. Let's together profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men, for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. I spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. As God's beloved children, we trust that our voices are heard. We put into words our needs and the needs of all God's beloved children. For the church, that we may continue to fulfill Christ's mission while welcoming all those who seek the Lord, baptizing in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the leaders of our nation, that they may strive to bring this new year a message of peace, harmony, and fairness through the oath they are bound as leaders of our nation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us who listen to God's beloved Son in his holy word and receive him in the most holy and blessed Eucharist, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are preparing for a Christian initiation in our parish and for all those who watch the Mass through CCTN, the Internet, and listen on the radio. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have died, believing that Jesus is the Christ, their Savior, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. This Mass is offered for the needs and intentions of our Holy Family family. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We bow our heads and remember in silence our own personal intentions and the intentions of those who have asked for our prayers. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, may you, have, may you be pleased with us, your children, as we strive to carry out on the mission entrusted to us by your beloved Son. Hear our prayers and grant them. We beg you in the name of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, who is the Lord forever and ever. And on behalf of Father John, I would like to 
uh, say a few words uh, for those who are watching on television and internet and listening to the radio. We pray for you and we are grateful for your great support for this ministry. Blessed are you, Lord, God of creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the wine, and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Wash away my sins and cleanse my soul. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, the offerings we have brought to honor the reveal, revealing of your beloved Son, so that the oblation of your faithful may be transformed into the sacrifice of him who willed in his compassion to wash away the sins of the world, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord of God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in the waters of the Jordan, you revealed with signs and wonders a new baptism, so that through the voice that came down from heaven, we might come to believe in your word dwelling among us. And by the Spirit's descending in the likeness of a dove, we might know that Christ, your servant, has been anointed with the oil of gladness and sent to bring the good news to the poor. And so, with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty, without end, we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, 
and giving you thanks. He said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, and John, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Lord Jesus Christ, we said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my room, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed. We realize that many cannot receive the Eucharist at this time due to this situation in the world is experiencing, but we ask you now to pray an act of spiritual communion with us. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things. I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Body of Christ.
Behold, the one of whom John said, I have seen and testified that this is the Son of God. Let's pray. Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly entreat your mercy, O Lord, that faithfully listening to your only begotten Son, we may be your children in name and in truth. Through Christ our Lord. We have one announcement that has been here for many, many weeks. Again, we are asking if you are still pondering a New Year resolution, please consider sharing your time and talents with your fellow parishioners by assisting at Mass. And now every service that you render to the church is a service, your occasion, being an uh, altar server, being a lecturer, being a Eucharistic minister or a, a reader, Whatever you render to the church is your occasion to serve the church. So there are opportunities for, for all of you. And these ministries are open to those over age 16. Pick up a registration form on the kiosk next to the welcome desk. And that's the uh, announcement. And as we know, I, I said Father William Brock is visiting us. I would like, like to say a few words. Uh, good morning, everyone. I'll be short. Father invited me just to present myself because normally a strange priest, people ask, you know, where, who is this priest? I am based in Atlanta. I, the, I was uh, born in North Carolina, oldest of 13 children, uh, became a priest. I was ordained a priest 42 years ago on Christmas Eve. I worked for 30 years in Spain, almost 10 years in Mexico during the, the, the narco, the cartel wars down in Mexico on the border city, well, in Monterey, but on the border city also of Nuevo Laredo. I just want to tell a little quick little story. Um, one day I was celebrating Mass in the cathedral there in the city of Nuevo Laredo, and I had to say a Mass there, first Friday Mass, and a Mass in our school, which on the other, was the other end of the city. So I caught a beltway, and I was really speeding down the beltway to make it on time to the Mass at the school, and I noticed everyone was driving at the, you know, religiously at the proper speed, which is strange for Mexico. So I, I continued at my own velocity, and around when I come around a bend, a police car comes out and chases me down, pulls me over, and one of the two officers comes up to my window and says, hey, you know, you were, you were really stepping on it there, no? 
And I say, yes, I admit I was, because I have to be in the mess in two minutes, about a quarter mile down the road. So he looks at me, and he sees me dressed, dressed as a priest, and he says, are you a priest? And I go, yes, I am, as a matter of fact. And he says, he looks, he looks back towards his companion, he says, would you mind blessing the patrol car? <laughs> so I, got, I said, sure, I went out, I blessed the two officers, I blessed their patrol car, and in exchange, they forgave me my sins. <laughs> but the curious thing was how many times difficulty brings us closer to God, or we look for God's assistance. We've gone through a year of special difficulties. Remember that when you go through difficulties, God is closer to you than you think, and he's kind of wanting to invite you to discover him in those strange circumstances that he has allowed over you. So ask for that grace. Thank you very much. Thank you, Father William. And thank you for your presence and prayers here. And stay blessed and stay safe. And uh, God is good and gracious all the time. Therefore, keep smiling. Thank you. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Our closing hymn is Songs of Thankfulness and Praise. CCTN and its programming are made possible by your generous support. 5125 South Apopka Vineland Road, Orlando, Florida, 32819. Thank you. This is CCTN, the Catholic Community Television Network.